this is the third lecture of module 1 neural networks. We have already discussed uh, the linear neural network system identification using the linear, linear neural network. Then we talked about the feed forward neural network that is multi layer network which has capability of approximating any nonlinear function and we learnt in the second lecture uh, how to derive back propagation algorithm for the feed forward neural network that can approximate any nonlinear function. So, today in this third lecture we will uh, again review the back propagation algorithm that we derived in the last lecture. Then the generalized delta rule we will understand this concept today. Then system identification using this back propagation algorithm. Then two different uh, variation in back propagation algorithm that is adding a momentum and adaptive learning rate. Uh, today we will just have a, a very heuristic version of adaptive learning rate and next uh, after 3, 4 lectures probably we will have a uh, detailed analysis on how to comprehensively design adaptive learning rate for back propagation network. The reason being that this particular analysis would need uh, the concepts of uh, nonlinear stability for nonlinear systems that is Lyapunov function and Lyapunov function based uh, stability theory. So, these notions has to be uh, reviewed before we can uh, talk about a very comprehensive method of uh, computing adaptive learning rate for back propagation network. Okay. So, multi layered feed forward network that we have already discussed. We, we talk that uh, you have uh, input layer and uh, then you have many layers and these layers have many neurons and these are all input signals coming here and they are fanned out. Okay, and this is your output layer and these are all hidden layer. So, what we are saying that uh, the multi this is called multi layered feed forward network. It has more hidden layers of computation unit that is these hidden layers can be more than one. So, you can have one, two, three, four as many as you want. And in this feed forward neur neural network, F FNN stands for feed forward neural network. So, this the connections are allowed from one layer to succeeding layer in this in the forward direction, not in the backward direction. And I cannot have a connection like this, this is not allowed. So, this connection is not allowed from this layer to this layer from this layer to this layer it is allowed. Hidden layer gets input from input layer and gives output to the next hidden layer or output layer after internal computation. So, this is a basic uh, structure of uh, feed forward network. So, this is the notation we used in the last class about the back propagation network. X is the input, V is the hidden or output y is the actual output, w i z uh, this is the weight connection between i th unit of output layer and j th unit of hidden layer, w j k is weight connecting j th unit of hidden layer and k th unit of input layer. Uh, so, this you can easily see that my x is input which is p dimensional vector and uh, the summation that weights uh, into the uh, the input uh, signals and they are all summed here that sum is h. So, if I say h uh, uh, j, so h j is simply uh, w uh, j k x k sigma over k. So, this is your h j and then v 
is after uh, you go through this sigmoidal activation uh, that becomes your V. So, V j is simply 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus h j that is uh, the after sigma sigmoidal activation and again uh, as usual your output y uh, it is n dimensional output and uh, y i is uh, you add you know, all v 1. So, that is your so this is we have shown here. So, v j is 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus s j where s j is uh, w j k x k k equal to 1 to p and similarly final response y i is phi g i which is 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus g i where g i is w i j v j. So, that is uh, if I go back here uh, this I write here g that means my g uh, i is simply w i j into v j sigma. Okay. So, this is my uh, this is sigma. Okay. So, what you are seeing is that w i j is the connection weights between output layer this output layer and uh, the hidden layer and w j k is the typical weight between hidden layer and the input layer. So, this is the notation we used in the last class. Uh, so, this is called forward phase in forward phase we computed the output of the hidden unit and then output of the uh, output of the output unit and then the back propagation. Uh, given the patterns input output pattern. So, my uh, given input x I know what is the desired target y d and uh, my network has a response y i. So, I compute a cost function e t which is a quadratic cost function and I use the gradient descent rule uh, which of this nature w i j t plus 1 is w i j t minus eta do e t upon do w i j t we have already discussed a lot about gradient descent. So, this gradient descent we apply to compute the error back propagation. So, doing that updating weights connecting output layer and hidden layer. So, this is the weight what we are focusing is w i j you see that w i j uh, we are talking about this weight. So, once my I transfer the signal from x to y then here my target is there, I compute the target error here, I back propagate it, I back propagate the target error. So, this is my E here at the target and this target error is back propagated and through back propagation I update what is W i j uh, has to be updated. So, the what we derived is that uh, to compute what is uh, the weight update in W i j, uh, we need to know uh, compute what is do e t upon do w i j and that uh, gives me a formula uh, do e i t upon do y i upon uh, into do y i upon do w i j uh, that is because do e upon do w i j how do I compute this. Say I know that e is summation of e i. So, hence uh, differentiating E with respect to W i j means I differentiate E i with respect to W i j and take a sum okay. and then individual E i is a function of y i. So, I differentiate E i with respect to do y i and then y i which is a function of W i j I differentiate that and that is how I compute this partial derivative. Okay. So, here this is do e upon do y i t which is half uh, because this this is this function e i is simply y i d minus y i whole square this is my e i. So, hence if you look at it look at it here half into 2 y i d minus y i into uh, when you differentiate with respect to y i. So, you get minus 1 here. Okay, that is very clear. Now, do y i upon do w i j is do i i upon do g i because we know that y i we found out this is 1 upon e to the power minus g i. So, that is 
we have already shown here y i is a function of g i. So, while differentiating obviously, I will differentiate y i with respect to g i and then g i with w i j. So, doing that way finally, I get this expression delta w i j is eta y i d minus y i y i minus y i into v j. Okay. The weight update algorithm we wrote in a generalized format w i j t plus 1 is w i j t eta delta i v j and v j is the input you can see is easily here when I am updating weights for w i j v j is my input to the weights in this layer. Okay. V j is the weight uh, input to the weights in this layer and my error is E which is uh, so the back propagated error that I am talking here is represented as delta i and this delta i which is the error back propagated from the output layer is defined as y i 1 minus y i into the error at the output y i d minus y i. So, this is called uh, the back propagation algorithm my weights are updated the new weight is old weight plus eta error back propagated into the input signal to the uh, connection. And similarly, uh, so we derived for w i j now we are talking about w j k and w j k was the weight vector, weight vector or weight matrix between the hidden layer and input layer. So, when I we can again go through the similar we have already derived I will not go uh, detail I will not go through the detailed discussion. So, what we did is that uh, when I differentiate E with respect to W J K then I differentiate E I with respect to Y I and Y I with respect to W J K the similar manner and ultimately we finally get a relationship which is again a, has a generalized form w j k t plus 1 is w j k t eta delta j x k. The similar format you see uh, the earlier one was w i j t plus 1 was w i j t plus eta delta i into v j. So, this is the weight uh, update for the between output layer and hidden layer and this is hidden layer and input layer, where input layer uh, the input is x k and delta j which is the back uh, error back propagated from the output layer. So, this is the you see the delta i is the error back propagated in the uh, layer uh, in the output layer and you multiply the corresponding weights w i j uh, and do the summation that is the total error back propagated from the output layer to the layer uh, between input layer and hidden layer into v j 1 minus v j this quantity which is delta j. So, this is the delta j is the back propagated error to the layer that is situated between hidden layer and input layer. So, now I will summarize what we saw uh, in the back propagation algorithm. So, we have a typical input layer the vector x which is p by 1 and then a single hidden layer the output is v which is m by 1 this is p and then the output layer which output is y and this is n by 1. So, let us consider a jth unit jth computational unit in the hidden layer ith computational unit in the output layer and input layer kth computational unit right so what we saw in back propagation algorithm w here 
W i z t plus 1 is W i z t plus eta delta i into e z. So, what is v z? This is the so, what is my w i z? This is my connection, this is w i z. So, this particular weight is updated based on the error on a single data set instantaneous uh, based on instantaneous update rule. What we do now we update w i z based on its previous value and the correction is eta is the learning rate, eta is learning rate. Normally, this value is eta is 0 to 1, delta i, this delta i is the error back propagated from the output to this output layer. I normally say this is the second layer, this is the first layer. So, let me say this is the second layer. Okay. So, delta i we found out the weight to be uh, y i 1 minus y i into the error that is uh, y b i minus y i. So, this is my error at the output multiplied by y i into 1 minus y i is delta i and v z is the, the input, this is the v z. So, if you look at w i z, the input is v z to this connection weight and the output of this unit is y i. So, given that the delta i has a unique structure, delta i is y i minus 1 minus y i, y i d minus y i and the, the update rule also has a unique structure because v j is the input to the connection weight, delta i is the error being back propagated through this weight eh? and this is a very and this is this is called delta rule that is the in terms of the weight update rule has a very simple form which is delta which is error back propagated into input and same thing also we will see here. This weight which is w j k by convention that we have already discussed. So, this is my x k the output of this unit and output of this unit is v j. So, the weight of that law we saw which is w j k t plus 1 is w j k t plus eta delta j into x k. So, you see that this and this has the same form. So, that is why this is called delta rho. We can we can and of course, the delta j has a different value than delta k, but it has also a unique structure. Delta j is v j 1 minus v j into sigma delta i w i j over i. So, I add i the output unit is 1 to n delta i w i j multiply v j 1 minus v j. So, this is my error being propagated from this unit over this, this is the error delta j. So, this is delta j. So, delta j is being back propagated in this particular connection weight from this output layer is very important to understand okay. and delta j into x k, x k is the input to this connection weight. So, you can easily say that error back propagated in that particular connection weight into the input to that connection weight if you multiply and multiply a, a learning rate and that gives you the back propagation rule and it is very simple rule. So, using this delta rule concept we can write down this back propagation algorithm for any layer network and that is what we will write now here in the next one. So, the which is we will say generalized delta rule, we derived 
this delta rule for a single hidden layer. Now, we will generalize this delta rule for any number of uh, hidden layers in a fit forward network. So, that is why it is called generalized delta rule. So, uh, let us consider you see here we have a multi layer neural network and this multi layer neural network has n layers. This is the input layer, first layer, second layer, third layer and l layer. Uh, and these are all fit for one network, these are all fit for one network, okay. these are all fit for one network. And the index for each layer like we earlier assumed i j k, uh, i is the for output layer, j for hidden layer and k for input layer. So, similarly here the index we have little generalized i l for lth layer and so similarly i i is for ith layer. So, i 3 for third layer, i 2 is for second layer. So, this is obviously, for input layer the index is i naught. Okay. So, with this particular convention, we can easily now write down using the same whatever we discussed here, our uh, the, the normal delta rule. So, this is called delta rule, because the our weight update algorithm consists of the error back propagated into the input to the specific connection weight. So, this is delta rule. So, uh, using that we can now write down the, uh, the uh, update rule. So, you see here uh, this is my uh, uh, the weight uh, typical connection weight between L and L minus 1 layer l and l minus 1 layer. So, this is what I am talking about here, this is my w i, this is my l and i l minus 1. The, the weights between this layer, lth layer and the preceding layer, just preceding layer. So, we are talking about what is the, how do I update the weight in this layer. Once I pass the input through this network, compute the output at the output layer, compare with the, uh, the desired data and then I want to update this weight. So, the same formula. So, that is eta delta I l into V l I l minus 1. So, this is the input to this, this connection weight and this is the error being back propagated. And obviously, you can easily see that delta I L. So, this L and this capital L and uh, lower case and upper case are same, we are not uh, discriminating. Okay. So, delta I L is Y I L D minus Y A L into uh, this is our this is our error at the output and you have to multiply this uh, uh, term Y I L into 1 minus Y L. So, that uh, uh, transforms the uh, error at the output to the when it is back propagated. So, this is the this delta I L is is here. So, this is error back propagated in this immediate layer. So, that is the lth layer. Okay. So, this for the output layer and delta I L uh, 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 so, so okay, this this L represents any 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 layer. This is not, and uh, delta I L is the uh, for the capital L that is the output layer. We have made some um, uh, changes here. So, this you see that let W I L I L minus one denote the synaptic weight connection. Uh, synaptic weight connecting the ith neuron of layer L to that of layer L minus 1. So, this L is a any typical layer. Considering sigmoidal function activation function as, as the activation function for each layer, uh, the weight of that law can be written as. So, this is for any any layer. Okay. So, this, this particular uh, weight is the weight between any of these layers. Okay. For example, if I take L equal to 2, then 
uh, this is the layer l equal to 3 then this is the layer l equal to 1 then this is the layer l equal to capital L this is the layer ok. So, so this is the general delta generalized delta rule this is a generalized delta rule ok. So, given the uh, the delta at the output layer we can easily compute corresponding delta in all preceding layers subsequently ok. And then we can update all the weights in all the layers using this concept of delta rule. I will give you a simple example. So, uh, let us uh, explain this generalized delta rule uh, through a another example a four layer network we will talk about this is input layer first layer second layer third layer fourth layer. So, obviously, the weight between third layer and fourth layer will represent by w i 4 i 3 the weight between third layer and second layer w i 3 i 2 the weight between uh, second layer and first layer first layer and second layer is w i t i 1 and first layer uh, input layer and uh, first layer is uh, uh, w i 1 i naught. So, this is our uh, convention we are following. So, given uh, the error that is y d minus y at the output layer. So, how do we go? So, naturally the the element of y is y i 4 ok, because i 4 is the index for the output layer. So, when I say y, y is a vector y i 4 is an element of the vector y all right. So, y is the output vector. So, this is <coughs> weight update law for the output layer that is the fourth layer. So, this is my first layer the second layer when I talk about the in terms of weight connection weight. So, this is connection weight first layer of connection weight second layer of connection weight third connection layer of connection weight and fourth layer of connection weight ok. So, so as many layers we have that many layers of connection weights we have. So, what you are seeing here is that as we saw earlier w i 4 i 3 is the typical weight in this fourth layer is updated using the generalized delta rule which is eta delta is the error back propagated and v i 3 is the input to the input to the uh, connection way uh, to the connection weight w i 4 i 3. So, and what is delta i 4? Delta i 4 is obviously y i 4 d minus y i 4 into y i 4 minus 1 minus y i 4. This is my error that I computed here and this is transformed because of the sigmoidal activation function we get this. If we have a linear activation function this particular term will not be there ok. So, this is my the update rule for the uh, last layer or the output of fourth layer. And then uh, the third layer similarly eta delta i 3 v i 2 ok. So, this is delta. So, this is my delta i 4 here this is delta i 3 delta i 2 and delta i 1. <coughs> so, I computed what is delta i 4 based on a delta i 4 I can compute what is delta i 3. So, this is what I will do delta i 3 is v i 3 1 minus v i 3 into delta i 4 w i 4 i 3 and this is actually uh, i uh, 4 equal to 1 to uh, n or whatever the number of uh, uh, units in my lth layer ok. Similarly, this is uh, let me say this is n uh, uh, n l n 4. So, similarly this is n 3 ok. So, weight update law for second layer weight update law for the second layer will be similarly eta delta i 2 v i 1 uh, you can easily again check it delta for this delta i 4 into v i 3. 
this is delta i 3 v i 2, this is delta i 2 v i 1 and this is delta i 1 and x i naught because here it is input layer x i naught. So, this is what we will have now. So, this is what you can easily see uh, uh, eta delta i 3 v i 2 this is for third layer delta i 2 v i 1 second layer and this is your uh, the error back propagated and based on delta i 3. So, delta i 2 is computed based on delta i 3, delta i 3 is computed based on delta i 4 and similarly finally, delta i 1 is computed based on delta i 2 and this is your the first layer. So, given uh, any layer using generalized delta rule, we can write back progression algorithm. We do not have to derive again, you know, making all those, you know, complicated forward response equation and then differentiating uh, the error with respect to each typical weight and finding all those complex. There is no need actually. This, this rule actually is generalized. We do not have to compute. These are actually uh, the right uh, formula. These are, these, these represent the right formula, okay. So, we are done. We are done with the uh, first part uh, here uh, that we wanted to explain today is the generalized delta rule. So, in the generalized delta rule, uh, the concept was that uh, that we wanted a recursive formula for a back propagation learning algorithm. So, it allows the error signal of a lower layer to be computed as a linear combination of the error signal of the upper layer. In this manner, the error signals are back propagated through all the layers from the top down, that is from uh, the, the last layer, the output layer backward up to until input layer we reach, we can compute the error back propagated, which is in terms of delta, which is here. Uh, so, we have to compute here what is delta i l for the output layer and based on that we finally compute what is delta i 1. Okay. So, delta i 1 is computed based on delta i 2, delta i 2 is computed based on delta i 3, delta i 3 is computed based on delta i 4 and so forth. Finally, delta i l minus 1 is computed based on what is delta i l okay. and the normal uh, the, the general form is that this is your general form between uh, this is a typical weight between I l, uh, l layer and L minus 1 layer and uh, the update rule or delta w is eta delta I l into V I l n minus 1. So, what you are seeing is that eta delta I l V I l minus 1. So, this is our input to the connection weight and this is the error back propagated to the uh, layer L. So, using this concept now we will uh, demonstrate the application of back propagation algorithm for system identification. Since it is a uh, control course, we would always uh, use system identification for uh, demonstrating while demonstrating any uh, uh, the applicability applicable uh, no, application of a specific neural network. So, a practical system, uh, a search tank system has been taken for simulation. We will, we will identify the uh, a search tank system using a neural network or we will model the search tank. So, what is a search tank? Search tank, what you are looking at is that uh, this is normally a search tank is a you know use used to control the hydraulic transient and pressure changes. Like for example, you see this is a big reservoir and this reservoir the water sometime the level increases suddenly or suddenly decreases, but this, this reservoir is connected particularly you know to say hydro power plant. So, and where the turbines has to move in a specific speed. Okay. So, the flow rate here has to be constant. So, if this reservoir uh, the water level suddenly increases or suddenly decreases, then this flow rate will be a factor. So, to 
to maintain this flow rate constant, uh, the surge tank is used. So, what happens? So, whatever the you know, disturbance in this reservoir level, uh, that can be uh, controlled using a surge tank. You know, this uh, whatever the extra pressure you have, uh, this extra flow can be either uh, can be pushed to the surge tank. Normally, this surge tank has a linear uh, has a nonlinear, uh, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the 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 structure means the the, the level. That is, uh, it is uh, if the, the, if the surge tank is the structure is like this, that means this is uh, the cylindrical structure. Okay, a cylindrical structure. Um, that means the uh, everywhere the diameter of this uh, surge tank. Say say for example, this is a circular thing. Then the diameter is constant. But if the source tank has a nonlinear structure, uh, then given the specific flow into the source tank, the the water level in the source tank, uh, the the water level in the source tank, and the, the, to the flow rate into the source tank, they they bear a nonlinear relationship. Okay. So, we would now, we will try to model the source tank, because uh, unless we know how to model the source tank, we cannot design, because we must know given a specific water flow into the source tank, how the level, water level in the source tank is increasing or decreasing. Based on that, we will design a source tank and, and specific dimension of the source tank, eh? okay. how the diameter will vary linearly or nonlinearly, all those things. So, we will we are just taking a nonlinear surge tank model. So, this is a schematic of a surge tank, the schematic diagram. So, when the pressure increases due to sudden change in the flow from the reservoir, the level of the surge tank increases, thus controlling the flow as well as the pressure to the connecting system. So, this flow is controlled uh, accordingly. So, uh, typically we will not, we are not interested now how we derive the model of a surge tank. What we are interested that uh, given a nonlinear structure of the uh, source tank, this is uh, the dynamics of a source tank that is S t plus 1 equal to S t plus t is a sampling time and this particular uh, nonlinear you can see easily uh, this is a nonlinear function. Uh, uh, because this is a square root of h and also u is uh, uh, is multiplied with uh, 1 upon uh, square root of h. So, hence this is a nonlinear function. So, t is the discrete time step that is uh, the sampling instant first, second, third, fourth, fifth okay. and t is the sampling time, u t is the input flow and s t is the liquid level in the source tank g is the gravity due acceleration due to gravity. Okay. So, this is our model of the source tank. Why I am considering this model? Because in simulation, we do not collect data from the actual source tank, we collect data from a uh, model, mathematical model in simulation. Okay. So, and using that data, we will represent those data in terms of a neural network model. And this neural network model is the back propagation network that we have just learnt. So, so what we have done is that for the for we have taken this model and we generated data using this model, not using actual source tank, actual source tank that is there in, 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 in the field, okay, for probably in the hydro power plant. Uh, we, we are not we are just we want to demonstrate the application of back propagation algorithm to a specific uh, system modeling. So, this is a uh, mathematical model of a surge tank and using this mathematical model we generate data. Using that data we create a back propagation network. So, this you will see. So, what we have done here is that we have taken sampling time capital T is 0 0.01 in the mathematical model and 150 data have been generated using the system equation. The, the, we saw that equation, this is the equation. So, using this equation, okay, so we generated 150 data. 
that is what is u t given u t what is s t plus 1. Uh, so, this is our input we have selected and this is the output corresponding output. So, to that equation you set t equal to 0 0.01 and g is the normal uh, acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81 meter per second square. Once you give that parameter uh, here uh, all other things are known. So, t is given a 0 0.01 g you are giving. So, it is simply u t and h t. So, you given u t you compute was s t using this particular equation. So, we used uh, runge kutta fourth order to generate uh, the response. So, this response is generated using runge kutta fourth order equation. Uh, uh, this is actually there is no need actually this is a discrete time recursive equation. Uh, if it is a uh, um, uh, uh, differential equation then we would have used uh, runge kutta, but it is a simple uh, recursive equation. So, there is no need for the uh, runge kutta equation. Uh, so, this so we generated this data given this uh, input and then we selected a network structure and we took a back propagation network having two hidden layers, two hidden layers each hidden layer has 15 uh, neurons or computational units and uh, number of output is the uh, this is desired whatever the desired uh, that we got from the data is our we have represent data in, in this term u t and h desired t plus 1. This we get from the a system equation. Okay. So, this is my desired output as a d t plus 1 given what is u 2 u t, but you can see here how we select. So, you see here in back propagation network fit for one network I if I give u t I cannot compute s t plus 1. You can easily see s t plus 1 is a function of s t as well as u t. So, h t plus 1 is a function of h t and u t all right. So, obviously, uh, this h t I take from this system because at instant t I am able to measure what is the liquid level in the source state. So, I am measuring that. So, that actual value I know what is h d t and u t is the flow rate that I am able to measure that is going to the search tank. So, given the actual liquid level of the search tank at time t and the flow rate at u t, I have to predict what is h t plus 1. Okay. So, this is my model. So, obviously, to my system the uh, the input is u t and h d t which is written here this is actually d here the desired that which has been computed from the actual system. Okay. So, number of inputs I have 2 and output is my h desired t plus 1. So, given u t h d t I must predict what is h d t plus 1 all right. So, that is the objective. So, we have fixed learning rate to be 0 0.2, number of input output data is 150, activation function for hidden layer is sigmoidal, activation function of the output layer is linear we have taken. Okay. So, we have two uh, uh, hidden layer, so they are sigmoid and the output is linear, Just, but you can select your own architecture and do the same thing. Uh, you can take actually, in fact this can be easily done using a single uh, hidden layer and output layer with sigmoidal activation function is easily you can do it just for. Uh, so, what we do is that we have 150 training data, we selected a network architecture, we observed what is my uh, input to the network and uh, what is my output and then we update the equation uh, recursively 
uh, update the weights. So, in, in the beginning all the weights in the network were uh, randomly initialized uh, and very small values we took and you see that uh, the, the, the error uh, has been reduced uh, uh, to less than 0 0.004 after 20,000 epoch. What is epoch? Each epoch is 150. That is in my data set I have 150 uh, uh, different sets of data that is uh, one data is my H D T U T and H D T plus 1. Okay. This is my a single data set at T and T equal to 1 to 150. So, I have like that 150 data set. So, I give to the my, my network U T and H D T compute what is H T plus 1 compare with the HDT plus 1 and back propagate the error and update the weight. And doing that I am able to uh, reduce or make my cost function 0 0.004. So, after training is over what we did? We give to the network a different uh, control input, a different control input and compare with actual output that is this control input was given to this equation and then we computed what is the output. This is actual output based on this equation and then we gave to the neural network that has been trained and once we gave that uh, uh, the, this input to the neural network and the response and the actual output based on the equation they are actually matching you can see here. So, you can see that there is a red line here and there is a green line. So, red line is the desired based on equation. So, red computed from equation and green from the neural network okay. and both red and green they are very much following each other. So, in a sense we can say that the actual system identification has been done. That is uh, the equation that represents a specific uh, you know uh, the, the mo uh, a model of a specific search tank that has been again represented using back propagation network having two hidden layer. So, the now we will uh, uh, look into into some other aspects of back propagation that is uh, the variation uh, the some problems in back propagation is that as I al already told you the normal back propagation it can only optimize if my cost function has a single minima. For normally my cost function will have many local minima as well as global minima. So, I may reach here I may reach here because if I start from here I will reach here if my I my weights I initial weights are here then I will reach here because that is the gradient descent if I my initial weights are here I will reach here. So, this is the limitation of back propagation. Okay. So, reaching global minimum in back propagation is not guaranteed that is why uh, there is certain variations people have researchers have introduced in back propagation algorithm first first is improve the conversion speed avoid local minima and the generalization capability. Generalization capability means if I have trained my network for a specific data set it should be able to predict for new data set what is the output that is called generalization. So, uh, one of the way to improve the conversion speed is the adding a momentum. How do we add a momentum? So, this is our equation this is actually a heuristic approach but we can analyze this equation just immediately. So, you see what is this is our normal equation w t plus 1 is w t minus eta del e by del w t this is our normal gradient descent. Then I have added a momentum term which is alpha w t minus w t minus 1. So, when I add this this is a heuristic there is nothing no derivation here we have not derived this particular term this is a heuristic. But let us see what happens objectively analyze this equation in a flat surface. What is a flat surface? In flat surface 
w t minus w t minus 1 is same as w t plus 1 minus w t. This is called flat surface. Okay. So, that is say for example, sometime in my error curve is like this. So, I am moving like this. This is a flat error uh, surface. So, if somehow I am here, I do not want to stay in the flat surface. I want to come back to the valley. I must go towards the valley region. So, my speed should be very fast in this zone. So, in that case w t plus 1 minus w t is same as w t minus w t minus 1 which is delta w. So, if that is the case I can rewrite this equation which is now if I rewrite this equation this is 1 minus alpha delta w which is delta w is w t plus 1 minus w t and say this is also same as this is also delta. So, this is my delta w and w t plus 1 minus w t also delta w. So, 1 minus alpha delta w is minus eta del e upon del w t. Hmm. So, once uh, you look at this equation then I write, uh, write down what is my weight update delta w increment in weight is minus eta upon 1 minus alpha delta e by del w t. So, if you look at the normally delta w is eta del e upon del w t, but introducing this heuristic term I am able to increase the learning rate by a term called eta by 1 minus alpha and alpha is less than 1. So, obviously, you know if I say alpha is 0.5 then 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. So, effective increase in the learning rate is twice. If I make alpha is 0 0.9, then 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1. So, effective eta is now 10 times the actual eta. So, the learning rate is thus increased by a factor by 1 minus alpha in this flat error surface. So, this is called uh, how we can increase the convergence speed and this is an example this is an XOR network and in the XOR network we have taken eta equal to 0.5 this is learning rate and alpha is the momentum rate 0.8 and you can easily see here uh, when we use the simple gradient descent we do not use the momentum rate. My number of iteration is 4200 I take 4200 iterations to converge uh, that is my RMS error is less than 0 0.0005 and for, for the same uh, uh, reaching the same termination condition uh, with the momentum I need only 2200. So, almost half of the uh, means the, you adding a momentum I could reduce the, the number of training uh, 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 is uh, by half. So, this is called the speed of convergence, the, the convergence speed is almost double using uh, this momentum term. It is not always, it is not that always I by adding momentum I can increase the convergence speed, but some, some cases because it is a heuristic, it is not always true. Similarly, adaptive learning rate for this we will have a special class, but today I will just uh, give a simple. Uh, uh, note how we implement adaptive learning rate by heuristic manner. So, a heuristic approach to adaptive learning rule. So, you see that uh, in a back propagation eta is a fixed value. Once eta is fixed uh, most likely you will be in local minima, but if I vary this eta in a very intelligent manner in such a way it can avoid the local minimum. This is called adaptive learning rate. Can I do that? So, here is an a heuristic approach for which we do not have a theoretical basis. Simple based on certain intuition we, uh, we, we derive this algorithm. So, what this particular uh, heuristic algorithm is a different learning rate is assigned to each adjustable parameter that is every typical w i j is associated with a different eta. Each learning rate parameter should be allowed to vary from iteration to iteration 
when the derivative of cost function with respect to weight has same algebraic sign for several consecutive iterations, the learning rate parameter for that weight should be increased. Okay. When the algebraic sign of the derivative alternates consecutively for several iterations, the learning rate parameter should be reduced. So, what I am talking about you now, we compute always a del E by del W i j, where W i j is typical weight. So, if this derivative is constantly positive, then for that particular W i j, I increase the eta. And if this derivative alternates sometime positive then negative, positive negative, positive negative, then what I do? I decrease this weight. This is the heuristic we introduce. And based on that heuristic, this is my adaptive learning rate. Eta i p t is mu uh, eta i p t minus 1 okay. and d uh, eta i p uh, t minus 1. So, whereas mu and d are an increase and a decrease factor respectively. So, I either increase uh, this by mu or I decrease the previous eta by d. This is a factor, okay, you a multiplication factor. So, I either increase it or I decrease it. So, you see that uh, the, the increase factor means it has to be greater than 1, decrease factor means it has to be less than 1. So, we have taken mu to be 1.1 and d to be 0.7 and we have taken the same XOR function and uh, and now using the adaptive learning rate and training is done until the root mean square error is less than 0 0.004 for the XOR gate. So, we finally get we see that without adaptive rate as we have already seen the 4200 the simple gradient descent gives you 4200 uh, number of iterations or training uh, uh, samples or that that many uh, times I have to update the weights 4200 times I have to update the weights. Whereas, uh, using the uh, using the uh, this heuristic adaptive learning rule we could reduce that to 1300 okay, for the same um, root mean square error reaching the same root mean square error. So, finally, uh, to conclude, uh, uh, I would say what we discussed today is that we reviewed what is back propagation. We reviewed back propagation, we talked about generalized rule. Then we talked about uh, a system uh, identification. Of a source tank, and then we talked about uh, adding a momentum. This is to increase the convergence speed and. Uh, uh, to avoid uh, to increase the conversion speed as well as avoid local minimum also we uh, uh, we talked about a heuristic uh, adaptive learning rule and we will take a special class on adaptive learning rule in detail how to comprehensively using a uh, having a theoretical basis how we can compute this adaptive learning rule. Uh, probably after 2 3 classes uh, but this is the summary of today's class thank you very much